in the air, and we just want to encourage you, please come to the book table, whether you want to become a book distributor, or whether you want to sponsor any book, any of the book distributors, please come to the book table. I might want to say one quick thing also, my mom, so it doesn't matter what age you are, who you are, everyone can be a book distributor. My mom, she's, she committed today, I should distribute one book every week, so anyone can be a book distributor. Please come to the book table, both the community, for God and you and I will be here to support you. Thank you. Hare Krishna, I just want to announce there's a communication workshop on Sunday from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. There's also a three-day workshop that um, you're all invited to. It is for helping us to work together better to serve Sri Aburade. The idea is that it's for preachers, um, it is also for in, um, sanghas, anybody to come together so we can learn skill development. Gurudev has um, encouraged this, uh, it was on the website, so this is um, also something that uh, Gurudev has um, given his blessings to. So if there's any doubt, um, please work it out and come to the, um, the workshop on Sunday, 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock, or on the 5th, 6th, and 7th for three days, and you can see me. Hare Krishna. No more wish for that. Oh, my God. 
by the hope of Sashi Maya and by heaven and earth bliss. They were very high class of best people that practice. At that time, the ladies, old ladies, they thought that oh, Sashi Maya has so many children, uh, but they died. So this this is very, very beautiful, very beautiful. Like thunderbolt beauty. So that they cannot take him this walk. Say they name Nibari. Nibari means very bitter with me. So Jam will not come. And because he was weeping at that time, the lady used to clap and, oh, hurry, hurry, go, hurry, go. And then he used to oh, smile and laugh. So he was gold, golden collar. And hurry, go, hurry, go, hurry. He became so they named also Gaur Hari. Then the brother of Sachi Maya, Nilampar Chakravarti came and he saw the time was high class of astrologer and he saw the at that time, what is the city of Chandra, Surya, Vrihaspati, Sukta, Rahu and others? And he saw that very high class of all. And then he told Surya Ganath Mishra, Oh, this boy will not be ordinary. I see that what quality was in Krishna? Same quality in this boy. And he will Tell her the whole world as by astrology terms. So, in future, we will see that he will preach Vaishnava Dharma everywhere. Then, he told that he will support and nourish whole world by love and affection. So his name is Vishwamba. So he kept name Vishwamba. Now he, but Lady Thai kept Nimari. Oh, this name was prominent and all he used to tell. And Gaudhari also, Gaudhari, Gaudhari. In this way, from childhood, <coughs> when that boy was sleeping, Sachimaya, he heard the ankle belt like Krishna, but no ankle belt in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we are thinking, from where it is coming? From where it is coming? After some time, oh, Sachi Maya saw a foot, so many footprints, smalls, but all the Mark, auspicious mark, which are in Krishna 19. Chakra, Padma, Triko, Dhanus, Dharma, Arrow, and so many things. Oh, who came in my courtyard? He was thinking, but could not understand. One day he, she was of gift message of oil and he saw all the auspicious marks in his inheritance. Then he turned to heaven. One day when he became some bigger older, he felt wildness and very bigger snake and at that time he was his son was in courtyard and 
he went, that snake went to that boy, and the boy oh, hold the name of that snake and play it. <laughs> oh, Sachi Maya, Jagannath, all came and all ladies, they become very fearful. <coughs> oh, today this snake will bite and see him in that. And then Garud, 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 by taking the name of Garud, snakes closer. <laughs> so, when they are doing, then who was that snake? Mahasar, Sankarshan, Baldev himself. And then here, seeing that all are very careful, he just appeared. In this way, we see so many strange, wonderful character in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu life. Then he became more bigger. Then once a typing paper, a tramming who used to used to go and play with places. He heard that in this big city of Sachi Maya is very, very humble and very, very merciful. Anyone coming from outside, they stay in her house and she gives him food and everything. Then he came to there and what we can, you know, your students. In brief, I want to go very soon. So Srila Gurudev is very mercifully revealing to us the beautiful childhood pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And actually this room here is no longer Alashua, Florida. Now we are in Navadvip Dam in Mayapur on the banks of the so, uh, as Srila Gurdjieff uh, explained, this is all written by Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur in his Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. How in the early childhood of the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his parents, who were so simple, uh, Brahmins, uh, very pure, very saintly, they noticed so many extraordinary symptoms about their young, beautiful child. Uh, but they could not fully understand his transcendental identity. So, as Shulgurde was describing, there was one uh, traveling Brahmin, because in those days, the Brahmins would sometimes travel on pilgrimage, and they would be facilitated by other families and houses of Brahmins. So, uh, this Brahmin heard that there was a very good uh, place that he could go to, the house of Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Mata. So when he came there and they greeted him, and Jagannath Mishra especially greeted him with such honor and respect, and invited him, yes, please, please come into our home. This is Vedic culture, in Vedic culture, uh, even an enemy would be respected and considered and treated as a friend when he would come into a, a person's home. So they very respectfully gave him a place to stay in their household area, and uh, then the Brahmana, he requested from them that he would get some rice and he would also get some milk and some uh, sugar, different ingredients, because uh, this Brahmana only ate what he personally cooked. This is actually one of the customs of the very pure Brahmins of that time. They would only cook for themselves and they would only take their own cooking, no one else's. So this. So this Brahmana, he wanted to cook and offer to the deity of the household there uh, and that he wanted to offer this beautiful sweet rice, cooked down uh, milk and uh, rice and sugar like this. So then they supplied him all the ingredients 
and the Brahmin, very devotionally, with great devotion for the Supreme Lord, he began to cook this sweet rice. And he was completely absorbed in the mood of offering this sweet rice to the transcendental deity. So then, when he had completed his offering, he went to make his offering before the deity. And as he was saying the various mantras for offering, and he was so absorbed in this way, oh, who came there crawling? Little baby Nimai. And Nimai, uh, he came crawling up to the offering, and in front of the Brahmin, without the Brahmins knowing it, he began to eat the offering. So uh, gradually, gradually, the Brahmin completed his prayers, and suddenly he saw this young little boy, Nimai, there eating the offering that had been given for Lord Vishnu in the house. And he became so uh, upset. And he began crying out, Oh, what has this child done? What has he done? And suddenly, Jagannath Vishra and Sachi Mata came running there. And uh, he said, Your child, he has taken the offering. And then they, oh, they said, Oh, my dear Brahmana, please, please forgive. He's only a young boy. Uh, he does not know anything. We will... We will make sure that he doesn't do this. We will keep him separately. Please, please, you cook again. We will supply you again with the same ingredients, and you cook again and offer. Please don't take any offense from this young, ignorant young boy. So the Brahmin agreed, and then again he began to make his offering and cook with great devotion. And again, second time, he began to uh, prepare this offering to bring before the deity. And now, as he was ringing the bell and saying the mantras and offering again, a second time, baby Nimai again came. Somehow or other, Jagannath Vishra and Sachi Mata, they were not able to uh, detect where he was. And by his own mystic power, he came there. And he sat eating the offering. And then the second time again, the Brahmin, he uh, finished his mantras and he saw the baby again taking the offering. And now he became even more upset. He became so upset that he began uh, hitting his head with his hands and thinking that, oh, I must have made some offense that the Supreme Lord is not accepting my offering. Now Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Mata again came. This time Jagannath Mishra was even more upset with, with uh, little Nimai. And now, again, a third time, they begged the Brahmin, but the Brahmin was reluctant. No, 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 I cannot do. And because they considered it would be an offense if the Brahmin had come and such a thing would happen and he would leave the household. So now, he begged him one last time, please, we will make sure, absolutely certain, that this boy will not disturb you again. So now, uh, finally, he relented and he agreed, okay, I will do. So again, now he began cooking. Now it was getting a little bit later into the evening, and uh, Nimai was kept with his mother and father in a room, very carefully. And so now the Brahmin cooking, and with so much devotion, now again, finally, for a third time, offering to the deity. And at that time, uh, because of the desire of Nimai, oh, his parents fell asleep. Uh, and Nimai again crawled out of the room, crawled into the deity room, and now sat there eating the offering. And the Brahmin finished his mantras, and again he saw Nimai there. And now he became wonderstruck. Oh no, what have I done? What have I done? But now Nimai told to him, why are you complaining? You keep on calling me to come and to eat. You are saying all these mantras so that I will come here and I will eat the offering. So why are you so distraught? You are calling me to take the offering. And the Brahmin was wonderstruck that at that time, Devi Nimai revealed to the Brahmin, he actually manifested his Bal Gopal form of young Devi Krishna. And the, the, the Brahmin became overwhelmed with ecstasy. He fell down with tears crying, with tears rolling down his cheeks, offering prayers to Sri Krishna in this beautiful form of Devi Nimai. And now the Brahmin was totally, totally satisfied. And then at that time, Nimai, in the form of Bal Gopal, he told him, uh, do not reveal this to anyone, uh, that my identity is such. And the Brahmin agreed. So after this, 
uh, the Brahmins sat there and he took the Mahaprasad from the uh, deity that was offered to Nimai, that Nimai himself had eaten. And after this, the Brahmin thanked Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Mata the next day, and he went uh, away from the household. But it's understood that that same Brahmin, he didn't leave that Navadri area because he wanted to witness the pastimes, the childhood and youthful pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So in this way, the wonderful uh, mystical pastimes of how Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually is Sri Krishna himself, but now he has come in this most merciful form of Sachi Nandan Gorhari. Now we will continue to hear so many beautiful childhood and youth pastimes of Gorhari Mahaprabhu. <laughs>
that Mark Kevin not misbehaved. Then, in this way, he became some bigger, and then he was now studying in his school, Sanskrit school, the Ganga Das Pandit. At that time, one day a late, very beautiful girl came there, Lakshmi Priya, having so many sweets, sundays, banana, and so many things. Nimai Pandit called her, Oh, come on and give me all these things and worship me. I will give you the details. <laughs> she came and saw a beautiful Nimai. And Nimai also saw that beautiful girl. And then, when Lakshmi Priya went to her house, Sashima Maya heard this and he anyhow. The proposal that I want to marry my son to his father told your daughter and thus married one son. After that, Ketan Nimai Pandit he finished his school study and he became Vyakarna Chaja Grammar, professor of like grammar. And now he started his own school and the evening he used to go to Ganges and discuss each other Thaki. Thaki means? Thalasi. Thalasi. Called Thalasi. 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 Logical. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank And he used to defeat all. Even so many scholars and pandit of Naudi, they used to fear from me. One day, from Kashi, very learned scholar who has worshipped Saraswati Devi and he has the boon that he will be undefeated pandit. Anyone cannot defeat him. Now he has false ego and he was traveling all India and defeating all and taking a, a, a right condition that I'm defeated by this Kesoka. He heard that in now that there are so many learned scholars, scholars and then he came to know him and challenged any Pandit of Naudi can come and make debate with me. All Pandit became very worried. And they thought that how he can take his challenge. Anyhow, they told, in our this Naudi city, there is a boy, Mali Vyakarani. Knows, huh? First you should go to a very simple boy and if you will defeat him, then come to us. Very <laughs> Then, oh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard from his yesterday. Oh, about more than hundreds and hundreds disciples. So, they told to Nimai Pandit, O oh, Guru Dev, a Kesav Kasli Pandit has come and he has challenged any of Naudi Pandit. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to smile and told, Krishna never uh, tolerate any false ego. Let as see what becomes from Naudi, he must be defeated. Then, one day he was on the bank of river after sunset. And there, oh, all the boys, the students, oh, uh, in a circle, 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 so many, and they were sitting there. 
and each other discussing uh, in Sanskrit language. And at that time, that Sanskrit case of Kashmiri, he came and what became? You see.
So Guru Maharaj used to say how Mahaprabhu used to catch the leaders of society by very, very humble behavior. Like when Mahaprabhu went to, to Varanasi and all the Mayavadi sannyasis were there, how Mahaprabhu went and sat in the place where they would wash their feet. In this way, Mahaprabhu, by his humility, he attracted them. Therefore, Nimai said, Oh, you are a great devotee of Saraswati. We are just small children. We don't know much before you. Even we are not fit to be your disciples. Therefore, please be kind to us and describe some verses glorifying the Ganga. If the pundit was already pretty puffed up, so if you blow a balloon up more and more, then he's going to burst. In the case of Kashmiri, he began to say many, many verses like a machine gun. <laughs> His verses were so high, so much eloquent language, so much, a language means ornamented language, so many adverbs, this, that, everyone was just, they couldn't even understand what he was saying. And three hours, first after first, everyone was completely dumbstruck. Even most couldn't understand what he's saying. At that time, the pundit finished. Then he said, Nimai said, Oh, I like your verses. But one verse especially I liked. What verse was that? Then Nimai? Then Nimai said, That was a very nice verse, but there were five qualities and five faults of that verse. And the pundit said, which verse you found fault in? Then Nehemiah repeated that verse like a machine gun. <laughs> then the pundit was astonished. How you could hear so many verses like the waves of the Ganga, and you can catch one and repeat? That's an amazing thing. Then Nehemiah said, by the grace of the goddess of learning, one may become a great poet, but by the grace of the goddess of learning, one may become a Shrutida. Shrutida means one who hears once and always remembers. Therefore, your poetry is very wonderful. It has five faults, five qualities. Then the pundit said, my poetry, my poetry has no faults, only, quality, only good qualities, only good qualities. Therefore, Nimai found five faults in that. The Sanskrit, I cannot remember, but in three lines, there was like 14, there was blah, 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 blah. But the, one of the, like the third line, there was not so many rhyming consonants. Therefore, that is one fault. Another fault there is not clear of the subject because it described how <coughs> Lach, uh, Bhavani Durga, the wife of Shiva. Therefore, this could mean that Shiva has two wives. Which wife? That is not clear. Bhavani Bhakta. Therefore, Bhavani is already the wife of Shiva. Therefore, it may be not clear that maybe Shiva has a second wife. No, no. Bhavani has another husband. So. That is also another mistake. Also, there was not a matching number of consonants in one of the lines. Oh, this wow. one is three. Lakshmi, he has curl. Oh. Three means the Lakshmi has curl. So, this is three of three. Double. You have repeated the subject twice. Mm. And very complicated with Sanskrit. <laughs> then this is five faults. Then five qualities. Are so many, what can you can you find? <laughs> then the pundit was completely astonished. He tried to answer, but he couldn't answer because the goddess of Saras, Saraswati Devi had lost his tongue. He sang there with his head hanging out, he couldn't say anything. Then all the boys began laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Just like some of us make a mistake and all, this is not good. Then I said, don't do like that. They will be my silence the more. Don't do like that. Then very respectfully, he bowed to the feet of Kesav Kashmiri. Oh Maharaj, you are such a great scholar. Even the, poet, even the poetic works of great poets like Kalidas and Jayadev, there is some fault. But a learned person, we do not see the, the tiny mistake is there. We see that your poetry has no match. Therefore, please forgive me, I am like your students. Therefore, please be kind again. You come tomorrow and you please be kind to continue our education. Then the pundit, he felt Guru Maharaj described, he wanted to kill himself. He got so mortified to be defeated by a small boy who only knows Vyakaran or grammar. At the same time, Nimai's behavior was so sweet and so respectful and so affectionate that he felt pacified. Like sometimes we preach to someone and we defeat them, but they never come to bhakti. There's a saying, the operation was a success, but the patient died. 
<laughs> Iman was not like that. The operation was a success, but the patient didn't die because he gave him so much respect and honor. Therefore, the pundit, he did not kill himself. He went back to his home, and then he was thinking, and he prayed to Saraswati Devi, Oh Devi, how you could leave me today? I cannot understand how I have been defeated by a small boy, and chanting the mantra of Saraswati, he fell asleep. So in the night, Saraswati Devi came in his dream, and said, Pandit, you should understand that today your chanting of my mantra has become completely successful. Because who you met today that is not any small boy, that is the complete embodiment of all knowledge. Isn't it Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? He is Gyan Suru, the, the speaker, original, the original speaker of all the Vedas. In Gita, Krishna says, Vatante Kri, Veda Kri, Eva Chaham. O Arjuna, I am the speaker of the Vedas. By all the Vedas, only I am to be understood. Therefore, Saraswati said, Today you are chanting your mantra, your knowledge has become successful because you have darshan of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. By his potency, I have knowledge how I can argue with him. I could not stand before him, therefore, I disappeared from death. You should go and surrender to his feet and make your life successful. So the pundit, he woke up that time when the sun was just rising. If we have any good dream in the early morning, just at the Brahma Mahanta, that means a very auspicious thing. He woke up and ran into the house of Nimai Pandit. And when Nimai came out, he fell at the feet of Nimai. So Nimai was saying, Oh Pandit, you are a great scholar. I am a small boy. What you're doing, you should behave yourself properly. And the Pandit was weeping, No, you cheated me once. You cannot cheat me again. <laughs> By the grace of Sahas, what you me, I know who you are. You are none other than Sri Krishna. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu just told him, The fruit of knowledge is not mundane pride. The fruit of knowledge is bhakti. Like when Chitana, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu discussed with Sri Ramananda Roy after, then Mahaprabhu asked him many varieties of questions. Sarva Vidya Madhya Kona Vidya Sad. Then Sri Ramananda, Ramananda Roy answered, Krishna Bhakti Mina Arakona Vidya Nariya. Of all types of education, which is the topmost education? And Sri Ramananda Roy said, apart from Krishna Bhakti, there is no other type of knowledge, no other type of vidya. Therefore, all knowledge must culminate in surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Otherwise, that knowledge will just be a big load, like a person carrying, like a donkey carrying a big load that cannot taste anything. Therefore, we know so many scholars in this world, they're like spoons. You know, when sitting for Prashad, the spoon's giving out sweet rice. So many nice things he's giving, but the spoon cannot taste anything himself. People have so much knowledge, but without bhakti, that knowledge is completely useless. Brahmaji says one who simply accumulates knowledge, without that knowledge culminating in Krishna bhakti, like a person who beats empty pile of husks of rice, he cannot get any grain. Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced him. By the touch of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he developed pure devotion to Sri Krishna. He began dancing, laughing, weeping, rolling on the ground. All his pride was completely ground to ashes. Then the pundit became ecstatic, and Nimai said, Don't tell anyone who I am, or I'll kill you. <laughs> My pastimes, we finished here in Navarri, because then everyone will understand, Oh, he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. What will they do? They'll take him and put him in a box, and once a day they'll give him a piece of incense. They will Don't tell anyone, otherwise my childhood will be finished. So case of Kashmiri, that night, he left his elephants, his horses, all his books, all his disciples, and left and became a great Vaishnava. We have heard he is an incarnation of Vishnu Swami. Vishnu Swami, one of the four sampradayas of Sri and his Mahaprabhu, on the inspiration of Mahaprabhu, he spread in his body, new body, sorry. So by the grace of Mahaprabhu, he became a great Vaishnava, new body. Yes, some past when you went to Mathura, and there he began to do bhajan. After that, oh, Nimai Pandit went to East Bengal, and he was doing Parvat Pramachan everywhere. All so many disciples like they used to come and give one money all sand. Like in India you see any Bhagavad partner, they give all these things. They used to be. In the meantime, a Vaishnava named Sapanamish, whose son is 
first Raghuna, he came to Mahaprabhu and he told, I want to know, Prabhu, that what is the Sattva and Sattva? How, what is our Sattva and then what is Sattva? Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told, Divine Pandit, oh, Harinam Sankirtan is Sattva and Sattva. What is there? In this tattva, all will come by chanting name. When chanting name, there is then sadhan. And when you will see in name Krishna himself, in the siddha vasta you will see. So everything you will, your desire will be fulfilled. You should return back and go to Paranasi Kasi. And there, Yusuf, John played, then he returned, went to Kashi. After that, when he, he was coming uh, back, oh, he heard that, oh, Lakshmi Priya Devi has departed from this world. And Shakti Maya was very worried. After that, oh, Nimai Pandit was married to Vishnu Priya Devi. You know Vishnu Priya Devi, we will explain after, afterward. She was Prima Bhakti, embodiment of Prima Bhakti. And after that, oh, Nimai Pandit <coughs> went to Gaya to give finger to his father. And what became? Oh, you.
And the next place he went to was a place called Chakratirtha. There Chakratirtha, it is said that the footprints of Lord Vishnu, that they're there. So, going there, the Brahmanas, they tried to explain the glories of this place, that Lord Vamande, uh, whose one toe has caused the Ganga to descend into this material world, through the heavenly planets, um, into this earthly planet, that here his divine footprints are. Then Nimai, at this time he is not manifesting his pastimes as a devotee, still he is known as a logician, Nimai Pandit. But here in the glories of Lord Vishnu, then tears started to flow from his eyes, and he started to manifest his status symptoms. The Brahmas were amazed, but amongst those Brahmas, there was one personality. His name was Sri Ishwar Puripad. Sri Ishwar Puripad previously had been to Navri, and there in Navri Kam, he tried to disguise his exalted um, um, personality and, and stature. But the devotees, by and by, they were able to understand who is Sri Ishwar Puripad, his great devotee, that he is disciple of Sri Madhavendipuri. So, especially Sri Advaita Acharya. Um, he, he took initiation from Sri Madhavendra Puri. So, in this way, they are God brothers. At that time, Ishwar Puripad, he was also very much enamored and attracted by um, Nimai Pandit, and they would have philosophical discussions. So, when Nimai Pandit, he saw Ishwar Puripad, he said, Oh, I've come to Gaya to offer Pinda, Shraddha, for my deceased forefather. He said, but just seeing you, seeing a pure Vaishnava, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of my forefathers, they immediately liberated just by my having the Dasha. Ishwar Puripad um, and Nimai, then they discussed for some time, and then Ishwar Puripad, he continued um, in his um, going to different holy places, and then also Nimai Pandit, he went to different places in Gaya, and at these different places, he was offering um, Pinda or Shraddha for his deceased father. Later on that evening, um, Nimai Pandit, he went to his residence, and there he was cooking. Whilst he was cooking, then a knock came on his door. And when he opened it, lo and behold, it was Ishwar Puripad. So he welcomed Ishwar Puripad inside, um, sat him down, and he had um, practically finished, and then he offered Ishwar Puripad very, very sweet words, and then wanted to prepare um, the prashad to be presented to Ishwar Puripad. Ishwar Puripad said, no, 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 that you've been traveling, and now you've, you've prepared this, this is for you. He said, no, please you take this, and then I can very quickly prepare something for myself. So he served Sri Ishwar Puripad prashad, and then befitting the way to welcome a sadhu. Uh, then after Ishwar Puripad had finished, washed his hands, then um, Nimai Pandit, then he gave um, Ishwar Puripad a massage. Uh, and there he was um, very, very um, reverential towards Ishwar Puripad. Nimai Pandit, he was very much affected by meeting Ishwar Puripad in this association. The next day, he went to the um, birthplace, the appearance place of Ishwar Puripad. Mm -hmm. And there, I'm showing that that place where pure Sadhu has appeared, um, that that place is a holy place. There he glorified that holy place. And then he went back to Gaya, and he went to the, to the place of Ishwar Puripad, and um, falling at his lotus feet, he begged him, please. Um, you accept me as your disciple, and please, you bless me with mantra. Ishwar Puripad said, Niman, I know who you are, that you are playing your pastime, but I know you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. I know that you are that same Lord Krishna, <coughs> but if in your pastimes you want me to play this role, then I am just a puppet, uh, and you are the puppeteer. Then, Ishwar Puripad, um, duly initiated Nimai um, Pandit. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at that time Nimai Pandit told, Eitena Amish Samarpilo Tumare. He said that, Oh, Ishwar Puripad, that today I offer my body uh, without any hesitation 
um, without any um, restriction, I often at your lotus feet. That now I am yours. Hmm? So he's showing. You see, Padma, Yau Mure. You should give nectar of Krishna. That place, you benedict me huh? with the nectar of Krishna's lotus feet. Because yes. you are Vaishnava. Yes. Disciples should go like this way. Now I am not mine. Uh, oh, Gurudev, my body sold everything to you. Please accept and give me Krishna Bhakti. So, Nimai, here, he's come, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come as a practical teacher. In his very life, he's come to show us how we should tread on the path of bhakti. Lord Krishna, he has given instructions. Sāvam dhāma pritya māme kam sarnam vajā. Manmano bhavma bhakto. But now, he might find it, now he started to show uh, how to do sāvam dhāma pritya And that begins with taking shelter in the lotus feet of Sadhguru. Mm -hmm. And he shows how to approach Sadhguru, offering one's body, one's mind, one's word, and especially one's heart. Mm -hmm. And praying for what? Praying for only one thing, the nectar of Krishna's lotus feet. Praying for Krishna praying. So, Ishwara Puripat then duly initiated Nimai Pandit with ten syllable Gopa Mantra. Nimai Pandit, now, no longer playing this role of the logician, Nimai Pandit, but now he is changed. Now he is manifesting his pastimes of Vaishnava. He has said, Apani Karibu Bhakti Bhav Anikare, Apani Achari Bhakti. Sikha Musabari, that I will come and I will take the mood of Bhaktabhav and Apanyachari Bhakti, Sikha Musabari, and by acting, by showing how the devotee will act, huh, then I'll teach the whole world. So, Nimai was very dutifully chanting his Gopal Mantra, which he has received from Ishwara Puripai, and showing us, he chanted with great honor, with great care, and what was the result? That the Easter day of that Gopal Mantra, huh, who is none other than himself, uh, appear to him. Because he's now in the mood of Bhaktabhav. He's not coming as Bhagwan, but he's taking the role of Bhaktabhav. So instructing us that when Guru, Unapai Guru, he's giving us Diksha Mantra, that within this Diksha Mantra, uh, then the seed of that full blown flower of Krishna frame, that that is there, but that we have to take it in the right process. Immediately, Nimai, he manifested uh, the fruit of that. Then, now Nimai, he started to manifest divine madness, there in Gaia. He was thinking that, oh, now uh, I will have to run to Vrindavan. When Krishna appeared to him, then immediately, seeing the very beautiful form of Sham Sunda, with his very beautiful curly hair, Sham complexion, uh, his eyes moving from side to side, and then Krishna left him. Nimai started to cry and cry and cry. That, oh, I've attained the Lord of my heart, but now he's left me. What will I do? He decided, oh, I will have to run to Vrindavan. I will have to go to Vrindavan. So now Nimai, he left Gaya, and he decided that he will go to Mathura. He will go to Vrindavan. But as he was going, then a voice came and said that, oh, that you want to go to Vrindavan, but still you have your pastimes to fulfill and not be done. That you are that same Supreme Lord, that you have manifested for what? Yuga Dhamma Kavaitaimu, Nam Sankatan. You've manifested to propagate the glories of chanting the holy names. So, be, so first you have to go to Sri Nam So, Nimai, then, Instead of going to Mathura, then he proceeded on towards Sri Nabhidam. When he entered into the area of Sri Nabhidam, then all the Nabhidri Basis, it was as if that their life had come back. Because Nimai, he was the life and soul of all the Nabhidri Basis. Huh? All the Vaishnavas, all the presence of Nabhidri. That just as when Krishna, he would leave, then it was as if the life of the British Basis had left. Immediately the Navri Basis, they came out to meet Nimai. The elder Navri Basis, they offered their blessings to Nimai. 
his um, um, equals, uh, they embraced him. And those who were junior to Nimai, they received blessings from Nimai. But now Nimai, he was not in the same mood. Previously, Nimai, as Nimai pundit, he was very haughty, uh, kind of haughty. But now, he was quite humble, uh, very subdued, um, very sober. And he went to his to Antutri, Mayapur, to his home, uh, and there he took a very few Vaishnavas with him into a secluded place. And there he told them that I have something. Um, then he started to recall his pilgrimage in Gaya. And then when he remembered that he had gone to Chakratitha, and he was remembering the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu, then tears started to flow from his eyes. The holy name started to come from his mouth like a volcanic eruption. Uh, his hairs were standing on end. And he was just crying and crying and crying. And the few Vaishnavas that were there, they became enveloped in this mood. And also, they were crying. After some time, when Nimai's mood was subdued, then he said that I have a very important thing that I want to say to all of you. A very important thing. But you come tomorrow, and you come to the house of Shukrabha Brahmachari. Then, the Vaishnavas, they left. And the next morning, they were outside of the house. They were outside of the house of Shiva's Thakur. Shiva's Thakur, he had one um, vine that had mountain flowers. And it had the speciality that no matter how many flowers you pick, the next day it would be fully blossomed with more mountain flowers. So the Vaishnavas would go there every morning and they would pick flowers to do their puja. As the Vaishnavas they met, then one Vaishnava, his name was Sriman Pandit, he told, he went to the Vaishnava, he said, you'll never guess what happened yesterday. They said, what happened? He said, you'll never ever guess what happened yesterday. He said, what happened? He said, you won't believe it. You'll never believe it in a thousand years. They said, what happened? Nimai Pandit has become a Vaishnava! Nima!
Nityananda Prabhu. How we make? What is the Tattva first? And how we do work? And how we went to all holy places of India? And went to Vrindavan? And he was. One day he heard a voice that Nimai, your Nimai is not here. Oh, he has, he is in Navati. Now you can go and see. So, how it became? First, Nityananda Tattva and Sarkit in holy places, O Prem Prayajan Vedishti. First, in Tattva. He really became unconscious. 
and all the boys began to cry. Oh, the, the Kalku bear became unconscious, what will we do? So they were weeping and the villagers came. And one old man said, what happened? He said, we were playing the pastime of Lord Ram, and now he was playing the role of Lashran, and he became unconscious in this battle. So then the old man said, which boy is playing the role of Hanuman? Call him here, he came. He said, did Kuvay give you any instructions? He said, yes, now I remember. He said, when I become unconscious, you should go and you should bring the herbs from the Himalayas, Sanjeevani Bhuti, and by this I may be revived. So that boy, he played the role of Hanuman and came to the herbs, and those herbs were offered to Kuvay, and at once he opened his eyes, and Jai Sri Ram came back to life again. Everyone became so ecstatic. So in this way, as a small child, Nityananda Prabhu, he was teaching everyone how to be absorbed, always be completely absorbed in the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sometimes some boys would play the role of Krishna and Balaram, and they would enact the coming of Akrura to Vrindavan, and how Akrura was taking away Krishna and Balaram. And Kuvay would stand on the side of the road, watching Krishna and Balaram leaving, in the mood of Raj Gopis, and weeping and weeping. All the boys became astonished. So in this way, Kuvay performed his childhood pastimes. After some time, one sannyasi came to the house of Hadai Pandit. And Hadai Pandit said, I want to serve you. You request from me anything. And he said, I want to take your son with me. Because now I'm old, but I want to go on Tirtha Yatra, and I need some assistance who can assist me. So Hadai Pandit, this request was like a thunderbolt in his heart. But then he remembered, actually, that once Vishwamitra Rishi came to the home of Dasrat Maharaj and asked him, please give me your two sons, Ram and Lakshman. So then Dasrat Maharaj said, oh yes, take my two sons. And he left with them. Then he asked them, there are two ways to go through the forest here. One is long, but very safe. And the other one is short, but quite dangerous. Which way will we go? They said, no need to be in any danger unnecessarily, we'll go by the long route. And Vishwamitra Muni, he realized, this is not Ram and Lakshman. He would never be afraid of anything. This must be Bharat and Shatukna. So he took them back to Dasarat Maharaj, he was caught. And then Dasarat Maharaj, he gave the Ram and Lakshman to Vishwamitra Rishi. And not only did he become fortunate, but when Ram returned, then he returned with the goddess of fortune herself, Sita Devi. So remembering this pastime, the Hadai Pandit thought, if I will give my son to this sadhu, then this is auspicious. That's what Maharaj has done it. So with a, with a very heavy heart, with great difficulty, he knew it was the right thing to do, but he was so attached, he gave his son to that sannyasi. And then when that sannyasi left with Nityananda Prabhu, then Hadai Pandit became like a madman. So then that sannyasi, he traveled. He took him all over India for many, many years. Almost 20 years, even after the passing of that sannyasi, Nityananda continued to go on Chaitanya Yatra all over India. Sometimes he went to Vrindavan. And after going around several times, again, once Mahaku had appeared in this world and he had begun his Sankirtan Lila, Nityananda Prabhu arrived again in Vrindavan. When Nityananda Prabhu came to Vrindavan, there he came to Madhuvan and he saw all the Uddipana, all the trees and grass of Vrindavan were stimulating his remembrance of Krishna's pastimes. He saw the cows and coward boys and he is weeping, Kotai Kanai, oh my Kanai, oh my brother, where are you, where are you? And he would embrace them and fall unconscious, feeling so much separation. But then he heard a voice in the sky. He said, your Kanai, now it is Kali Yuga, and your Kanai is not here in Vrindavan, but he has appeared in Navadip Dham. So you should go there. So then Nityananda Prabhu, he became inspired and he set off from Vrindavan and came to Navadip. When he arrived in Navadip, he thought, if my Kanai is really here in Navadip, then I will not go to him. He will be able to find me. So he went and he stayed in the house of Nandanacharya. So during that time, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was seated among his associates and he told them, last night I had a very wonderful dream. In my dream I saw a golden chariot 
And on that chariot was a very large, very strong, golden person, like a wrestler, wearing blue silk cloth and wearing only one earring in his left ear. We can guess who it was. So, he said, I saw that person, and he was riding on the chariot and saying, Where is the house of Nimai Pandit? Where is the house of Nimai Pandit? And he pulled up outside my house. So I came outside and said, Oh, this is the house of Nimai Pandit? Who are you? And that big personality, he had a, also a, a plow on his shoulder. And he jumped down and he said, Oh, I am your brother, and tomorrow we will meet. And then, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Then I woke up. What is the meaning of this dream? Then he told his associates, I think that some great personality has come to now live down. So please go look here and there and try to find him. So Sri Thakur and other associates of Mahaprabhu, they were searching everywhere, but they could not find any newly arrived great personality. So they returned. And then Mahaprabhu, he smiled, he said, I know where he is. And he immediately stood up, and without saying anything, he walked directly to the house of Nandanacharya. So as he approached the house of Nandanacharya, Mahaprabhu and all the devotees, they saw a very beautiful person with very beautiful long black hair and he was sitting in meditation, in Samadhi. And from a distance they gave pranam to him and then Mahaprabhu approached him. So as Mahaprabhu approached him, then Nityanabhu, he came out of his internal consciousness and Nithai, his eyes fell into the eyes of Nimai for the first time and said, Oh, can I? Nithai, Nimai said, Oh, can I? It was Krishna and Bhara meeting again for the first time but in Gaurila and in great ecstasy they embraced each other and they fell to the ground unconscious. So they were unconscious for some time. And then Mahaprabhu, he came back into external sense and he was holding Nityanandapu unconscious in his arms. When the devotees saw this, they thought, how beautiful it is. And they said to themselves, it looks just like when Lakshman was unconscious, as we described before, when Lakshman was unconscious in the arms of Lord Ram, it's reminding us of that scene. Gadara Pandit was beholding the beauty of Nityananda unconscious in the arms of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Gadara Pandit, his heart was melting. He said, yes, now at last, Ananta Dev has given up, given up the pride of being a servant. You know that Lord Ananta Dev, he's the servant of Lord Narayan. And therefore Lord Narayan always rests in the lap of Ananta Dev. But when the servant gives up his pride, just like Actually, Braja Gopis, their service to Krishna is to allow Krishna to serve them. So they allow Krishna to serve them so that he will be happy. So Vidara Pandit was saying, now Ananta Dev has given up pride of being the Das. Why? Because instead of Narayan, he's resting in the lap of Ananta Dev. Now Ananta Dev is resting in the lap of Lord Narayan. So Vidara Pandit is very rustic and these feelings were going in his heart. So just then, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu glanced towards Sri Thakur, and Sri Thakur could understand the indication of Mahaprabhu and he began to recite the verse. Bahapilam Natabaravapahu Kanayo Kanikaram Vipratvasa Kanakakavisham Vajayam Timishamaram Rangangeno Adhasudhaya Puryango Pagrinde <laughs> this verse describes the beauty of Sri Krishna and Bhara and the coward boys as they're entering into the forest in the morning time, playing upon their flutes and singing the glories of Sri Krishna as he marks the forest floor of Vrindavan with his beautiful transcendental footprints. So when Shiva Thakur uttered this verse, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityanandapu, they became absorbed in the ecstasy of being Krishna and Balaram playing in their Vrindavan Lila. And the devotees began to do kirtan, and all became totally immersed in Vrajarasa. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 
that sannyasi, who went to South India, a place under the holy place, where he met Lakshmi Pati Tirtha in the Shishya Parampara of Madhva Jan. When he saw that he was always moved up, very high class of the body, sometimes dancing, sometimes so much doing. Then Nityananda Prabhu went to him, O oh Prabhu, I am surrendering to you, you should give me diksha. Then he became ready and then Nityananda Prabhu said the mantra that, oh, will you give this mantra to me? In this way, quickly initiated him and then from him he took initiation. Oh, this Lakshmi Pati Tirtha was also Gurudev of Srila Bhagavatam Puri Park. He was, he has taken diksha from oh, Lakshmi Pati Tirtha, but not Sanyas. When Bhagavatam Puri wanted to take Sanyas, they refused to give him Sanyas, so he took a Dranda Sanyas from any Mayabad, but really he was Vaishnava. So, you know about Madhvendra Pupa, she, she, she is senior to Nityananda Prabhu. So Nityananda Prabhu, though God brother, oh, but he used to respect Madhvendra Puri like Guru. So, in this way, he came to Vrindavan and from Vrindavan to Laudi. In this same way, how Nityananda Prabhu may gradually from all over Bengal and all over here and there, all the Parikas of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to meet him in Navadri. Now we will prakash him, manifest him. So, Haridas Sadhu, he was prohibited by cause, but from beginning of his childhood, he used to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, You can tell the, he speak about Haridasa. <coughs> Today's drama players. Om Gyan Yathimiram Dasya Gyan Gyan Let's go be ready also. Chaksuram Yathim Gyan Yathas Mai Sivya. First of all, I offer my obeisances unto the Lord of Sri Ramakrishna Guru. His divine grace, E.C. Bhakti Gurantha Swami Prabhupada, and then unto my Siksha and Sanyas Guru, Shiva Bhakti Gurantha Narayan Goswami So, Sri Haridas Kapoor, he was born in a Mohammedan family, he is actually known as Brahma Haridas because after Lord Brahma performed the pastime of stealing the cowherd boys, he had some regret and he wanted to make sure that he actually got to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the proper mood. That time he went to Navadvi and he did Tapasya and he got the mercy of Guranga Mahaprabhu that he would take birth as a Mohammedan and this Goranga Vila, and he would be the Namacharya of the Holy Name. So, Haridas Thakur naturally began chanting the Holy Name from a very young age, and traveling everywhere, and preaching about the chanting of the Holy Name, he started to become very famous, and people were appreciating him everywhere. So, in this village, where he was preaching, it came to the notice of the Mohammedan uh, administrator, Ram Chandra Khan, and he became very angry, very envious. Why Ram Chandra Khan? Huh? Uh, oh, he was, uh, no, he was Hindu, but he was working for Mohammed. No, not Mohammed. Yes, he was a Hindu working for Mohammed. He had taken Mohammed's name of So he was 
working there and he was very angry that why this Mohammedan has become a Hindu? Why he is chanting holy name of Krishna? <clears throat> no, no, why he is preaching everywhere? Not why all Hindu that is taking doing pranam, yes. that is why he became jealous. <laughs> because all the Hindu people were coming to him, they were hearing his preaching, and they were offering respect to him, pranams, obeisances, and he was getting so much respect from the Hindu population, so Ramachandra Khan, he became very envious, very unhappy about this. And he was Lord, but even no one comes and pay respect to him. Yes. Even though I am the administrator, I am the lord of this land, but no one is giving me respect, they are giving respect only to this person. And even though he is a, a Mohammedan who has become Hindu. And I am a Hindu, but I am working for the Mohammedan uh, government, but they are not giving me any proper respect. So at that time, he devised some plan that how I will corrupt the morals of this person, and then I will denigrate him in the public's eye. So he went that time to the prostitute, and there was one prostitute there, and he had spoken to her that, can you go and corrupt the morals of Haridas? She told, yes, not a problem. I will have him in my hands very quickly. So she went there to see Haridas Thakur. And at the hut where Haridas Thakur was chanting his mala, so she was seeing in the night. Huh? In the night. In the night, yes. In the night when she went there to see him. There so was then no she one. There was no one. Yes, there was no one there. She went in the night when nobody was there and he was alone in the dark. So there she heard him chanting, then she approached him. That uh, and he started to display in different ways uh, her gorgeous form and trying to encourage him that you please uh, have some relations with me. Then he told her, okay, don't worry, I will have relations with you. He never argued with her. But uh, I have a fixed number of rounds, mantras that I have to chant. So if you just sit here quietly, listen to me while I'm chanting. When I'm finished with my chanting, well then I will definitely uh, enjoy it. So like this, she waited whole night, whole night, whole night, whole night. Next morning came, still, Harbor Haridas was chanting his mouth. Then she told him, whole night I have waited, Haridas. Why you have not uh, finished your mala? Why you have not finished this? And why you have not enjoyed things? That's okay. Don't worry. You come back tonight, then sure, certainly I will be finished. I was not able to finish everything tonight. But if you come back uh, last night, but if you come tonight, then I will, definitely. So again, she went back to Ramachandra Khan. She said, after two, three days, I will have him. Just give me two, three days. Then again, she went back that night, and she was sitting there. And he said, yes, yes, very soon I will enjoy with you, only I have to finish this problem. And again, all night, chanting, 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 Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 so whole night she was, he was chanting, whole night, and she is listening, falling asleep, she could not stay awake, waking up in the morning again, oh, Haridas, now it is morning, night is gone, you have not enjoyed with me yet, but if you come again, you please come one tonight, and tonight definitely I will be finished with my vows, then you can So like this, she came again, and finally, she started to chant Hare Krishna. She started to hear the sound vibration of Haridas Thakur chanting. She also began chanting. And after hearing this chanting and hearing this chanting, and then she began chanting and began chanting, and gradually she became completely attracted to it. And then she began to repent, and she began to weep. And she begged Thakur Haridas, that you please give me your mercy. I have not understood what a great Vaishnava you are, what a great devotee you are, what a great personality you are. Please forgive me for my offense. Then he told her, yes, I will forgive you everything. You give up this life and you come here and I will teach you the chanting and how you can live and how you can take care of yourself. 
So she went and she gave away everything, all of her possessions. She returned to Haridas Thakur in a simple white uh, sari, simple dress. And he began to teach her the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. He taught her how to worship Tulsi Devi, how to perform the puja. And in this way, by her chanting, she began to become very popular. Everyone all over in the village started seeing that this Haridas Thakur was such a great saint, he was able to convert the prostitute to becoming a Vaishnavi. And people would come and they would give her food and they would give her things and she was maintained by the mercy of the villagers who saw her transformation. After this, Haridas Thakur went to Shantipur and he met with Adwaitacharya. Adwaitacharya had great respect for Haridas Thakur because he was always chanting the holy name, glorifying the holy name. At that time, there was a big ceremony that Adwaitacharya was performing. And many Brahmins came from everywhere. Adwaitacharya was very, very respected because his father was previously the royal priest. So, having such respect, all the Brahmins accepted his invitation and they came there for this great festival and ceremony. And there was a Shraddha Patra. At the end of the ceremony, there was a Shraddha Patra. This Patra should be given, this is a link that should be given in honor to the most honorable guest amongst all of the Brahmins and Pandits and uh, other persons who were there. The most honorable personality should receive the Shraddha Patra. So Advaitacharya chose to give that Shraddha Patra to Namacharya Haridas Thakur. And one Brahmin became very angry. But what kind of thing is this? This person is a Mohammedan, he is a low-born person. There are so many pandits here, so many Brahmins, so many Chakravartis, so many uh, personalities, and he has given the Shat Patra to this lowly Mohammedan simply because he is chanting some mantra. Then he became very angry, and this Brahmin got up and he left. But when he went away, as he was walking, he was remembered. Oh, when these Brahmins left, they started to remember this pastime of Advaitacharya when he was young. As a young boy, he would go and visit his father at the palace, where his father was the royal priest. So the king made some objection. Why your son is never offering pranam to Durga, to the demigod? Why he is always ignoring? So, when the king ordered that you cannot do like this. And his father ordered him. King is very angry. You should bow. You never bow to Durga. You must bow to Durga. When Adwaita bowed down to the deity of Durga, that deity disintegrated into pieces and blew away. So the Brahmins started to remember, oh, this actually who is Adwaita? He is so great personality that simply by his bowing, the demigoddess Durga Devi disintegrated and blew away. So if he has given Shraddha Patra to Haridas Thakur, then this is not ordinary thing. All right, we should accept and we should return. Then they all returned and they took Prashadam of Haridas Thakur, remember in his past. After this, Thakur Haridas went to Kuliagra. There he was preaching and so many people were coming and offering respects. Then they became the Mohammedan king, he became very upset. Actually, it was the Mohammedan, the, the, the clerics, the priests, the Mohammedan priests, they were the ones who were upset. That why a Mohammedan is chanting Krishna's name? Why he is glorifying Sri Krishna? This is not a good thing. A Mohammedan shouldn't glorify Krishna's name. He should not act like a Hindu. So they complained and complained to the Mohammedan king. So the Muslim king said, all right, you bring him before me and I will examine him. So they brought him before and Thakur Haridas, when he came, he was chanting and chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. He had no fear. They brought him to the jail. When he came to the jail, he began chanting in front of all the uh, thieves and murderers and everyone in the jail and all were chanting. And he began chanting with them, and everyone began chanting in the jail, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 Hare Hare. So he was fearless. He had no fear. Everyone could see he was a great personality. He had a very beautiful body with long arms to his knees, and beautiful features, and a brilliant intelligence. 
So they could understand he was always glorifying the holy name of the Lord. He is a great personality. So then Kappa Haridas was brought before the king, and the king requested him that you are a Muhammadan, you are born into Muhammadan a religion, you have a great religion, you should be saying the name of Allah, you should be glorifying Allah, you should teach the teachings of Allah. You please give up this chanting of Hare Krishna. Just give this up and take to your religion and become uh, a proper person again in society. But Thakur Haridas laughed and told them, I will never give up this chanting of Hare Krishna. I will always chant Hare Krishna. I will always chant this holy name. And when the Mohammedan king demanded again that you should not do this, then the clerics all told him, Oh, you should give him proper punishment and you should whip him in the marketplaces. So, at that time, they demanded, the king again demanded, I will give you one more chance. You give up this chanting. And he said, no, I will not give up this chanting. All right, then you will be beaten in 22 marketplaces. And so in this way, they began to bind up Thakur Haridas and take him with a rope around his neck, pulling him from one marketplace to the next marketplace. And in each marketplace, two men with large whips began beating him and beating his body and beating him again and again each time beating him so many times that people were weeping in the streets. People were feeling the pain of the whipping. But Thakur Harida simply smiled the whole time and continued to chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So severe was this beating that his skin was being removed. His flesh was being removed. His bones were showing. Blood was coming. So severe, but he never cried, he never whimpered, he never said anything, he only smiled and continued to chant the holy name. Through 22 marketplaces, the men who were big, strong men with bodies like solid slabs of stone, who had been beating him and beating him, were now becoming exhausted, completely exhausted. And Mahapu and uh, Haridas Thakur was totally unfazed. So at that time, finally, they stood before Haridas Thakur and said, if you will not die, if you do not die, then we will be killed. Our families will be killed. They will think that we have not done our job properly. But Thakur Haridas, you are not dying. How you are surviving this beating marketplace after marketplace? And Thakur Haridas said, you want me to die? Only that? That's all you want. Well, that is no problem. So I will die. And immediately, Thakur Haridas fell down on the ground in Samadhi. A very deep, deep state of Samadhi, where he was unmoved. So then they brought his body back to the palace of the Muhammadan king. And they said, see, now he is dead. So then he said, okay, he is dead now, so then you should bury him. Then the cleric said, no, don't bury him. Because in Muslim religion, you bury somebody, then they get chance to go to heaven. They said, he should not be given chance to go to heaven. You should throw him in the river. Then he will have no place in this universe. He will not be able to go to heaven. He will not be able to go to hell. He will go nowhere. He will simply suffer for eternity. Okay. Throw him in the river. So they tried to lift him. So all of these strong guards came, and they tried to lift Kapar Haridas. But because he was in such deep state of samadhi, he was very deeply embracing the Supreme Lord in ecstasy. So he became so heavy that even ten very strong men, they could not lift his body. With great effort they tried to lift his body, but he was heavy, 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 so heavy they could not lift Finally, Ganges River 
And after leaving the Ganges River at that time, he met with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What? What he told? What he told? What did Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tell? He was going to Vrindavan, but in the way Nityananda Prabhu directed him to Santipur, and there all Dharma, his mother and all met him. 